So I've been trying to be a better human being and read more books, one of which being Jonathan Wilson's book Inverting the Pyramid, which is a really good book if you're a complete football nerd like me. Anyway, in this book, Wilson discusses many great innovators of the game, but only one person sticks in my mind as an absolute genius. And because the very few friends I have keep insisting I need to give this thing called a social life a try, and will refuse to listen to me waffle on about some Hungarian guy who died 41 years ago, here's a video about Bela Gutmann. Gutmann started his playing career with Turek V's where his what was described as graceful playing style earned him a move to MTK. After just one full season, Gutmann found himself out of favour, and fearing growing anti-Semitic persecution in Hungary, Gutmann moved to Vienna in 1922, where he joined Hakoa and set about being a part of their rise with the team earning professional status in 1925. It was during this time that Gutmann earned his first international caps, and it was for Hungary that his prickly natures first came to light. In the 1924 Olympics, Gutmann was disgusted at how the Hungarian Hungarian's accommodation was being based around the luxury of the officials rather than the performance of the team. And so he and a few of his teammates went rat catching, tied together the tails of the rats, and hung them on the hotel doors of the officials. Unsurprisingly, this was the last time Gutman would receive an international call up, so it was back to club football with Hakoa. Now a professional side, they decided to do a money spinning tour of America. However, the mixture of being significantly better than their opposition whilst also not being as rich was fatal for Hakoa, as by the end of 1926, half of their squad had been snapped up by US contracts with Gutman signing for the New York Giants. The end of his US spell came after the Wall Street crash, which left Gutman cash strapped. I poked holes in the eyes of Abraham Lincoln in my last $5 bill. I thought then it wouldn't be able to find its way to the door. He returned back to his beloved Vienna to begin his coaching career in 1933, but he didn't find major success until he moved to Enschede in the Netherlands in 1935. After an initial three-month contract, Gutmann made sure to include a huge bonus in Enschede won the league. And I mean huge, like bankrupt the club huge, which being a team looking over their shoulders at the time, the board accepted. They must have been sweating when Enschede qualified for the championship group and only finished two points from winning the whole thing. After a less successful second season, Gutmann returned to Hakoa before fleeing to Hungary to avoid the Nazi invasion of Austria. Being a Jewish man during the Second World War must have been unimaginably horrific for Gutmann, and understandably, he refused to reflect on this part of his life. In his autobiography, he simply writes, Countless books have been written about the destructive years of struggle for life and death. It would thus be superfluous to trouble our readers with such details. After the war, Gutmann immediately started bouncing between clubs. First Vosash in Hungary, then Trokarnal in Romania, where he walked after a director seek to interfere with team selection. It is reported that Gutmann said to the director, OK, you run the club, you seem to have the basics, and then just walked out. He then returned to Hungary and won the league with Wiepes in 1947, which earned him a move to Kishpest, the club of French Pushkash. In retrospect, having two characters of such magnitude at the same club wasn't the greatest of ideas. This came to a head a year later when Gutmann lost his call with fullback Mihai Pachi and ordered him not to go out for the second half. But Pushkas instructed him to stay on, which he did. And so Gutmann decided to spend the rest of the game in the stands reading a paper before leaving the stadium and never returning. Gutmann continued to hop around the footballing globe, going to Italy, Argentina and Cyprus before returning to Italy in 1953 with AC Milan. By 1955, Gutmann had them top, but he was bizarrely sacked after a row with the board. His part in comment was... Interesting. I have been sacked, though I am neither a criminal nor a homosexual. Goodbye. Two years later, he went back to Kishpest, now named Homved. It was whilst on tour in South America that he captured the attention of his next team, Sao Paulo. It was his period of management after he returned to Europe in 1958 that he is most remembered for. He joined Porto and in his first season won the league in 1959. Pippin Benfica to the post, who subsequently hired Gutmann themselves, where he won two European Cups back to back in 1961 and 1962. During this period, Gutmann displayed that it wasn't just tactical mastery that contributed to his success, but also an incredible eye for talent. After winning the first European Cup, he signed a completely unknown Mozambican striker to lead his line for the new season. His name was Eusebio. By the next European final, Eusebio was the star man and scored twice in a 5-3 win over Real Madrid. At the end of the game, Pushkas, who had scored all three goals for Real Madrid, seeked out Eusebio to swap shirts and pass him down his prestige to the next generation. After the final, Gutmann suggested that he deserved a bonus for his success. The board refused and yet again Gutmann walked. Now if you've heard Gutmann's name before it's probably because of the rumour that came from his resignation. It is said that Gutmann cursed the club for not giving him his bonus, which seems like bollocks until you realise Benfica have lost 8 European finals since 1962. 8! Despite now being in his 60s, he continued wandering, having further success in Uruguay before taking the Austrian national team job in 1964. Unfortunately, the theme of religion changing the course of his career continued after anti-Semitism drove him out of the job after just five games. 
Goodman would have five more jobs before retiring to Vienna in 1973 and dying there in 1981. As a player and a coach, Gutmann spent 54 years committed to the beautiful game and benefited almost every club he went to. His eccentricity has earned him comparisons to Jose Mourinho, but I don't think that's fair to the great man. His cunning genius and fiery nature is uncomparable in my opinion. He overcame adversity in every stage of his career and still maintained an incredible record and I only hope that this video can be a fitting tribute to him.